What's up, VC community? <laughs> uh, well, today is Wednesday. It's March 3rd. It's a nice day, man. I didn't have to work. I had to go to the dentist. And uh, they fixed me up real nice. See? So anyway... <laughs> get out of my mind anyway um if you read the uh, description of this uh, video it is uh my super tramp uh digital collection that means cds uh no vinyl i already did that and this will be a quick one because i don't have a whole lot of stuff but i do have things that were released on cd that were not released on vinyl so course that means you get to see the whole thing including the very first one now that i know that this is the first album <laughs> all right these things when cds uh became the product to push by the record companies uh super tramps back catalog came out rather quickly and um so i picked them up real quick because i didn't know how long they were going to be out there for um but these these were available almost right away real fast like i'm talking about 87 88 i think uh, maybe yeah in 88 i think i'm pretty sure these things came out right in 88 or 87 or 88 anyway it's just their first album and um a little bit more proggy than um, their later stuff but uh you know it's good stuff it's not the original lineup uh if you watch the the vinyl collection you'll know about a lot of that stuff i mentioned all the guys who are in the groups and the lineups there's only four people in here there's nobody um oops it's not a five it's not five people it's just four people and um but it's a good album it's pretty good i actually listened to uh after i did the, the vinyl collection i listened to um both the first two albums and they're actually really good records they just didn't go anywhere because that's like how the music industry works man if they're not pushed they don't go anywhere and that's what happened but anyway that's the first album here's the second one um kids cover your eyes for some reason, uh, the uh, the booklets in black and white, where as the uh, LP is in color, so I have no idea why. Because the uh, that tattoo looks a whole lot more magnificent in color. Um, everything else looks about the same. <laughs> anyway, it's another good another good album. Different back cover. Uh, that was a gatefold, so this is inside the gatefold. This is the front cover. It does grab your attention, right? Of course. Okay, here's their third album, Crime of the Century. And, uh, great album, right? School, Bloody Well Right, Hide in Your Shell, Asylum. Dreamer, Rudy, if everyone was listening, and Crime of the Century, and this is what kicked them up the charts, man. They started really getting a lot of attention from this album because it's a great fucking album. It is better than the, uh, the first two, there's no doubt. A little while ago, they re-released this as a digipack with a, uh, a live concert. Uh, live at Hammersmith Odeon, March 9th, 1975. They uh, did School, Bloody Well Right, Hide in Your Shell, Asylum, Sister Moonshine, Just a Normal Day, Another Man's Woman, Lady, uh, You're Adorable, Dreamer, Rudy, If Everyone Was Listening, and Crime of the Century. And um, I think it's well worth getting for that concert, no doubt. Of course, the uh, disc one is just the album uh, remastered. 
2014 release, so it's probably remastered in 2014 or 2013. Alright, Crisis, what crisis? Again, I say this is a great album. Yeah, this is a great record, man. Easy Does It, Sister Moonshine, Ain't Nobody But Me, Soapbox Opera, Another Man's Woman, Lady, Poor Boy, Just a Normal Day, The Meaning, and Two of Us. It's a good record. Listening to Dubop. Here's a, um, what do you call an unauthorized, 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 <laughs> unauthorized uh, release. I'm guessing this is an unauthorized release. It does have a barcode on the back. Let's see, makes it look authorized. Is everybody listening? And this is actually a concert uh, from Cleveland, Ohio, 76. Wow, they don't have the exact date. If this say licensed from A&M by uh, special arrangement with uh, Universal Music, special, special markets, special marketing. And this was actually uh, released 2001. This was available. So anyway, um, but... Uh, Great show, man. Uh, school, Bloody Well Right, Hide in Your Shell, Asylum, Sister Moonshine, Just a Normal Day, Another Man's Woman, Lady, Dreamer, Rudy, If Everyone Was Listening, and Crime of the Century. That lineup is awful close. Yeah. This is exactly the same lineup, except for the track nine on here, which is the song, uh, You're Adorable. Uh, 12 tracks on here, 13 tracks on here. It's exactly the same lineup. So, wow, that's amazing because this was recorded in 1975, March 9th, 1975. And this was recorded in Cleveland, Ohio in 76. I find it hard to believe that they were doing exactly the same lineup, but that's what I'm seeing here according to this information in front of me. And I've never noticed that before. Miles. Miles Davis. And then of course you get, uh, even in the quietest moments, which I thought was a fantastic record. When I was a kid in high school, this came out when I was in high school, man, this, this hit me. This hit me good, man. This was a good album. 1977. Um, and I was happy to get it on CD because, you know, um, when you're listening to an album, uh, a quiet album, uh, you're going to hear, like, any pops or ticks or crackles or surface noise. And it's nice to hear it uh, on a digital medium where... There's no surface noise, I have to admit. Then again, I still like playing the, <laughs> the album. But the album's in great shape, so. But anyway, great album. Uh, this is highly recommended. Actually, this and the last two that I showed are highly recommended. And then, of course, there is uh, Breakfast in America. And, um, you know, what can you say about it without, you know, making people either sick or, <laughs> you know, it's just redundant because, uh, you know, I don't know. It's a funny album, man. It's it's amazing what uh, radio airplay, or what I should say, too much radio airplay can do to an album, to its popularity. That happened with Boston. That happened with this. That happened with... Um, 
well, certainly certain songs, like, um, uh, Stairway to Heaven, and <laughs> what are you going to do? You give it a little bit of time, and you go revisit it, and you realize it's really actually a great um, collection of songs. There's really good stuff on here, and I think, actually, a lot of the the songs that were uh, album tracks, they weren't singles. Uh might actually be some of the better ones or at least my more favorite tracks so like the logical song and it's a good song but kind of poppy anyway can you say haha <laughs> uh, look there it is again well of course because they had to remaster this they did that in 2010 and um Excuse me. There is a, uh, of course, there's the uh, the regular album, and of course that's remastered, and uh, then of course this too is a concert, 1979 live world tour, the Breakfast World Tour, and um, it's a good lineup, good track. Uh, line up the logical song, Goodbye Stranger, Breakfast in America, Oh Darling, Take the Long Way Home, Another Man's Woman, Even in the Quietest Moments. Really glad that they would include that on this tour because that was such a great song off that album, that title track. Rudy, Downstream, Give a Little Bit, From Now On, and Child of Vision was the closer. Child of Vision is one of my favorite songs off of Breakfast in America and that makes good sense. But this is, this is, if you are a completist, here it is, a, you know, remastered DigiPack in 2010. And, um, good concert. The, uh, the live concert album that they put out after that album came out was Paris. So it's obviously a different show. Right? Right. Here, this one here is what I'm talking about. Paris. Different show altogether. And uh, this was actually released in 1980. The CD was probably re uh, not available till 1988. <coughs> so, but anyway, this is, uh, of course, this is great, man. This is worth having. 16 tracks. And of course, um, famous last words. All these CDs that were uh, released back in, you know, they started pressing these in 87, 88, and they, you know, put them out. No extra tracks or nothing. Certainly not. And then Cannonball or actually Brother Where You Bound. I always keep calling this Cannonball because that's of course the very first track and it was a single and it is a damn good tune. Um, but Anyway, great album. This is the one that came out after uh, Roger left. A couple of years later, they put this out. Uh, free, free as a bird. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that, who are you know, fans of Super Tramp. Some of them aren't too warm to this but uh, I actually liked it a lot I thought it was a really good record and I liked listening to uh, I paired this up in a cassette tape with Hi Hi which was Roger's solo album about the same time and it was a nice pairing man same thing with uh, with the previous album and Roger's solo record all right here's this uh, album live 88 
This is actually A&M Records, at least it says that. And then of course it has a barcode. So, um, this actually was uh, pressed in West Germany and I think that's where this was released. I don't think this is, there's any domestic release for this. <clears throat> so this is a concert, uh, Roger's not with them, of course. And uh, yeah, live in 88. Let's see if I can find out what the date is on this thing. I'm pretty sure it's in, I read this book and I can't remember it, <laughs> but I read it. Uh, yeah, this is a drag it because I gotta find it. I, I didn't memorize it for this. Ah. Looks like. Oh, Rick wrote the uh, the notes for this uh, in August 88. Oh, shit, man. It looks like this was... Ah, yeah. Here's what they did. Um, they were touring in 88, and they went down to Brazil and played, and then they went to, uh, to Canada, played in Winnipeg. And it was short break and it was over to Europe for the major portion of the tour. About halfway through the European dates, I began to realize this was probably the tightest Super Tramp band that I could remember. I, su I suggested as an experiment that we record some of the shows using a simple two track tape, tape recorder plugged directly into the mixing board in the hall as opposed to the more traditional 48 track mobile recording truck. No special producers and no additional engineers. So it's a raw recording. Direct to two track from the from the deck. Um, I'll tell you what, man. I have no problem with that, and I wish that more uh, artists would go ahead and do that. Because a lot of times you catch some really great stuff. You catch some great performances, and you don't have to go all nuts and uh, do the forty eight track thing and mix it all down. If you got a good guy working the sound that day and it's going directly into the board and the board's going directly into your two track uh, stereo tape, you might have a, you might capture a nice show. And this is exactly what these guys did now. Uh, Hello. Included for, for the first time, you know, I can talk, I can tell you what the track listing is, but I'm looking for. Yeah, this is nice. Also of interest to longtime followers is Mark Hart's interpretation of Breakfast in America and the Logical Song. It's hard for me to imagine anybody else but Roger Hodgson pulling it off, but Mark did. It's also good to hear John Hellowell in his favorite environment on stage, playing with great relish throughout. This is great, man, because he's, he sounds happy. Uh, it does, uh, let's see, here it is. Recorded live direct to two track at various 1988 concert performances. So I guess what they did was they went and listened to everything and picked the best of uh, performances out of each tape and threw them on here. Good for them, man. I'm so glad that they did that and I wish more artists that I really like would do that. Um, so the, the track listing on here is on this Live 88 collection is You Started Laughing. It's only about a minute. It's less than two minutes worth of You Started Laughing. That might just be a tape for all I know. I don't know. It's All Right. Not The Moment. Bloody Well Right. Breakfast in America. From Now On. Free as a Bird. Oh Darling. Just Another Nervous Wreck. The Logical Song. I'm Your Hoochie Coochie Man. Don't You Lie to Me and Crime of the Century. So that's the track listing from 1988.
this is what they were doing. And uh, there's your package. So yeah, this is an A&M product from uh, Europe, from Germany. All right. And don't you chump it. All right. And uh, here is uh, <laughs> Super Tramp's next studio album, uh, Some Things Never Change. I was excited. I remember when this came out, I was really excited. But uh, of course, Roger's not on it, and that's always a drag. I, it's. Uh, it's like 10 cc man you want uh godly and cream and eric and stewart to all be together um and you can't have that so you you'll take the next best thing and that's not so bad either this is a interesting album i need to listen to this again when i this first came out and i picked it up i remember going home and and uh checking it out and i liked what i heard and i've listened to it maybe one other time i definitely need to spin it some more because um, I can't remember it. <laughs> I just remember liking what I heard when I played it. Anyway, here you go. Ah, uh, here you go. It was the best of times. This is, uh, it's another live album. And uh, this is another import. Another import. It's the best of times. Let me see if... Uh... This came out in 1999. Right at the turn of the century. I am not seeing uh, a territory listed, but it is EMI. It's on EMI Records, which is strange. You'd think it would be on AM Records, and uh, nope. EMI. Hmm. How about that, you guys? Eh, anyway. Um, sorry, man. <laughs> It's like I'm spacing out on camera. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, um, let's find out what the date is on this recording. 1996. Oh, they signed with the MI Records back in 96. So. Live recording engineered by Ken Allardyce. That name sounds familiar. Um, hmm. Rick Davies, uh, January 1999 is when he wrote these liner notes. Um, here, hold on a second. Albert Hall, London, September 19th and 20th, 1997. So it was a London concert, two London concerts that they recorded. September 19th and 20th, 1997. 
okay? So that's where these tracks come from. And if you want the track listing, it is, oh my God, it's a hard, you got all the space, make this font bigger. It's a hard world, you win, I lose. That's on that last album. Listen to me, please. Ain't nobody but me. Sooner or later, free as a bird, cannonball from now on, breakfast in America. Give me a chance, Rudy. Then downstream, another man's woman. Take the long way home, bloody well right. The logical song, goodbye stranger, school, and the light. Don't you lie to me and crime of the century. Good way to end that bunch of shows, huh? Crime of the century. So anyway, there you go. It's a two CD set. I think that there are uh, other versions of this that are compiled down to one disc. Uh, but I didn't want that. I wanted two discs. I want the whole damn show, man. So there it is. And here is their last album that they released, um, <clears throat> which is uh, Slow Motion. Strange. Uh, cover. Really strange. Um, this was released in 2002. And I'll be honest with you, I don't remember even listening to this, but I picked it up when I saw it. Um, I just simply don't recall playing this. I probably spun it once. But we're talking about almost 20 years ago when this thing came out. So I just simply don't remember it. Uh, I don't even know what to say about it. Uh, Rick produced it. Co-produced it with Jay Messina and Mark Hart. So Mark Hart's an integral part of the uh, operation uh, with Super Tramp. This one. And the last but not least, what do they call this retrospectacle? Yeah, the Super Tramp anthology. Uh, if you are a Super Tramp completist, and you don't have any other singles, this certainly is gonna be one of those ones that you're gonna to wanna to get. Because uh, tracks three and four are Land Ho and Summer Romance. They're remixed, they're remixed versions uh, from uh, what was released on single years and years ago, back in 74, but at least they included them on here. Uh, it's a big shame. that they didn't include You Started Laughing. They did, but it's a live version. Uh, I think that was a real lost opportunity to uh, give you a complete collection, uh, well, to allow the Super Tramp Collector to uh, score all the, uh, uh, all the uh, studio material on a, you know, on so, a couple of discs because, um, that is only available on that single B-side. All right, so. But anyway, there you have it. Yeah, they, 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 uh, they included stuff uh, from some of these later albums. Here, Overuse, one track that they included. Is that on here? Yep. Overuse from here, from this album, and it's on here. So they, they it spans their entire career basically yeah surely it's this first track and that's from their first album right. so anyway that's it man uh hope you uh got something out of that and uh, i will see you next time see you bye